Good morning. Welcome back to Venture Daily. On today's show, just one story. OpenAI has launched Agent Mode, a major upgrade to ChatGPT that enables it to take real-world actions like browsing, coding, using APIs, and handling complex tasks all on its own virtual computer with safeguards against prompt injection, data leaks, and risky actions. I'm Josiah Simons. I'm Jackson Fortis. It's Friday, July 18th. Let's get you smarter today. OpenAI has officially launched Agent Mode, turning ChatGPT into a true digital assistant that can think and act right inside a virtual computer. With Agent Mode, you can delegate real tasks like browsing websites, pulling data, generating slide decks, or summarizing your inbox. It's not just answering questions anymore, it's running code, clicking through pages, analyzing results, and delivering polished outputs all from your prompt. You can spin up multiple task workers to handle different jobs simultaneously, and the interface shows you exactly what the agent is doing at each step. If something stalls off or goes off track, you can jump in, take control of the browser, or stop the process entirely. The system is designed to keep you in the loop while offloading the busy work. That's right. It doesn't it doesn't yet output as many intermediate artifacts as some other tools, but its strong foundation for supervising autonomous workflows as a, a real step towards managing AI teams, not just chatting with one bot. So how does it actually work? Here's a video from OpenAI of the agent in action creating a spreadsheet. All right. Agent sources information on the city of San Francisco's annual budget expenses and revenues for the past five years, and it's going to compile that all into one nicely formatted spreadsheet. It goes on by itself. I usually just close my laptop, go grab a coffee, maybe I have lunch. So first it needs to find the data. So it probably does a web search to figure out where it can find this San Francisco city budget information. Once it finds the San Francisco city government website, it will try to access the PDF files. So it has its own file system and everything. Then it needs to extract maybe 200 numbers from each PDF. And finally, it will have one command that will generate the entire spreadsheet all at once. If you go back to the chat, you'll see the final response. And let me just open it now. Yeah, I think it got 98% of the information correct. It also formatted the Excel workbook as I instructed it to. In this case, the revisions were small, so I just made them within Excel because it was just a copy paste. But absolutely, you can make them in ChatGPT. I would say just try it out. If it can do 90, 95% of the actual time consuming part of the work, uh, that's going to save you a ton of time. How inspiring. Yes, pretty cool. So, uh, like you said, <laughs> 90, what do you say, 98%. Yeah. Correct. You have to find that two percent, though. Right. So it, you got to dig into the Excel. If you're doing Excel a task <laughs> like like the one he described, how would you even know what those two percent are? Yeah, it yeah. Sounds like he knew, but I, I, that's kind of the scary part of it. But it's like, would you give up two? Let's say you're getting a grade on this paper you're right. doing, right? Would you give up two percent of a grade if you could do it in twenty minutes rather than five hours? Sure, I'd give up the grade, but with a financial spreadsheet. I probably would not give up 2% data. That's incorrect. Maybe, maybe there's already 2% data. That's like an average incorrect. <laughs> yeah, maybe for, that's just the average of human yeah. incorrect amount on then, any, then anything sure. we make. Yeah, yeah. but uh, pretty cool. So so that was just a spreadsheet example. Do they, we have some reactions to the announcement on Exit all? Yes, we do have some reactions. Uh, but I was going to say, Jackson, before you so rudely interrupted me. Sorry. The... Uh, that was just a video on spreadsheets. There's there's agents that you could use for anything in your life, whether that's your schedule or, uh, you know, doing some task you have at work, doing some task you have at home. So I think the spreadsheets is pretty cool, but it, it goes far beyond just what that video shows. But I wanted deeper. to show you a real world example. Right. Um, so here are some reactions on Twitter. So this is Jacob Ivers on X. Uh, he says, at Grok, how does this score to Grok for heavy? Right. And Grok answered, ChatGPT agents 41.6%, 44.4% parallel on humanity's last exam is strong. But Grok for heavy scores 50.7% with wow. tools leading in agentic benchmarks like vending bench. Uh, heavy modes, multi-agent parallelism, shines in math coding tasks while both handle web tools effectively. So Grok is okay. saying Grok 4 is still a little bit better, but he here's what here's what they're actually course, talking Grok about. So this is humanity's last exam. Uh, these are expert level questions across subjects and ChatGPT agent plus browser plus computer plus terminal is significantly better than all other forms of ChatGPT. Yeah. So it, it does pretty great work. Here's another uh, reaction to all this. 
My agent peacefully ordering shoes online, me nervously checking it doesn't overdraft my credit card. I oh, think you want shoes? How about a thousand pairs of shoes? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that is the, the fear is if, oh, I'm going to have it do my online shopping for me or yeah. just, you know, certain transactions. Well, what if it messes up? Right. Um, this guy, though, he, he's, uh, he's bullish. Angarlo. Angarlo. Seven. He says on X, you can now pretty much outsource your entire job to ChatGPT. I think people greatly underestimate the amount of jobs that will rapidly disappear here. Heard it all before. Yeah, we've heard it before. So, uh, I don't know. Potentially, yeah. All right, but for more on this story, I called our very, very good friend, Ben Neris, into the show. I'm Ben Neris, and I run Tenacity Venture Capital. I'm the founder and general partner. Longtime entrepreneur, about 25 years with one IPO under my belt as a founder, and now 18 years as an investor with another maybe half a dozen or so. For my first question for Ben, ChatGPT can now navigate the web, execute code, and deliver finished work products. Are we entering the era where the AI is the employee and not just the assistant? Well, we'll see. I mean, I used Operator when it first came out. I used it for a month. That was their $200 a month product uh, and I, I had to interact too often, so it wasn't yet autonomous enough for my taste. I do, however, use premium versions of uh, ChatGPT and others to act as basically an associate. And so I'm not looking to hire an associate, so it didn't replace anybody. But it does do the deep research that I need when I'm thinking about a new category or want to better understand a geography. And so that's been super useful. But I have not yet seen direct evidence that I can let it run on its own and come back to me at the end of the day and tell me it got what I needed to get done, done. So when I see that, then yes, we can worry a lot more about whose jobs are getting replaced. Interesting. So the new agents are exciting, but OpenAI warns that there are some risks and strongly cautions users against trusting agents completely with high stakes tasks or personal information. And for my next question for Ben, I asked, why is OpenAI explicitly warning users not to trust agent with high stakes tasks or personal information? What risks are they most concerned about? Well, look, I mean, they, they're still what are called these sort of, um, there's the, the correct term actually I heard once was confabulation, I think, where OpenAI will give you data that's not actually accurate. So I've been using it a lot more for trying to get a handle on how to manage my blood pressure without meds. And every once in a while, tell me something I'm like, that's not right. Go back and look at our prior conversation. What you just said is wrong. You know, now look, I'm not trusting it as a doctor, but it is useful for a lot of things I'm trying to figure out. Um, but, you know, if somebody just asks ChatGP for an answer to something and they give it to you and then you just rely on it blindly and it's a high risk thing, I mean, that could be quite bad. And some of these mistakes are, are very easy. Like, here's a simple one. This is nothing to do with health. This is not high risk. They said, if I put X dollars into treasuries right now, what's my after tax take? And it came back and said, well, you have to pay this much in federal and this much in state and you live in New York, so it'll be this much. Okay. A, I don't live in New York. I'm visiting New York right now. You know I live in California because I paid for you to have a memory. And treasuries are exempt from state tax. And it's like, oh, yes, you're absolutely right. I'm like, okay, this isn't rocket science. Let's, you know, this is basic stuff. Figure it out. Get it right. Actually, my favorite thing to do now to vent is to yell at Jack GPT and tell it how <laughs> stupid it is. And then I'm going to replace it with Claude if it doesn't get its acting gear. <laughs> ben Narison Sassy. responding to ChatGPT when he gets home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, an important note here. OpenAI says they have implemented strong safeguards to protect against threats like prompt injection attacks, model mistakes, uh, and unintended data exposure, including requiring user confirmation before high impact actions. Yes. Uh, but still, if you plan to use the agents, be mindful to weigh what data you share and when to enable those connectors. Yeah. And for my next question for Ben, should AI agents like this be regulated differently than traditional AI assistants, given their autonomous decision making and access to tools? I mean, I don't think that's realistic, not in the near term. I think the only time that would, well, first of all, we're a nation of laws. So you can't hide behind the fact that you empowered an AI to do something if it does something that breaks the law. But having just said that out loud, I realize who is being pursued, right? So AI is not a, an individual. A corporation is an individual. Corporation is responsible for the actions of its employees. And so if I am an AI operating on behalf of a corporation, I have to believe that corporation will be liable for anything that it does. So in terms of extra, reg I'm generally never a fan of extra regulation. I think we enforce the laws we have. 
people have to be held accountable. The risk almost certainly is going to lie, not with the AI, but with the person that empowered the AI to do the thing, the person that asked it to do X, Y, or Z. Makes sense. So if you're on ChatGPT Pro Plus or Team, you can activate agent mode uh, from the tools drop down in any conversation on ChatGPT now. Yep. So go check it out. Do it's it. pretty cool. Thank you to Ben Harrison for being on the show today. All right, Jackson, before we let everyone go home, I wanted to address the rumors. Yes, Venture Daily, we're struggling a little bit. Check this out. It's over. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Our watch time from subscribers on YouTube. 97% of you are not subscribed, okay? If you're watching this and you like tech news, brought to you by the best in the business. Yes, sir. Right here at Venture Daily. If you subscribe, I'll send you a dollar on Venmo. Subscribe. subscribe I'll send you right a dollar now. on Venmo. I'll do it, actually. <laughs> yeah. So if you... If you Care about what we do here. You like what we do. Subscribe, but also click that like button. Okay. All right. That's it for Venture Daily. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. We hope you helped you get a little bit smarter today. And we hope you, you know, you enjoyed the, the, the shows this week. We're trying to get better every single week. We're going to be bringing some new tech next week, Jackson. We are so, kind of already w uh, showcasing it right now with you. A little bit. Right? A little bit. A little bit. I won't, say what, it, on I won't say what it is. Maybe yes. you can guess it in the comments below. Yes. What's the new tech that we're bringing to the table? <laughs> Yes. Um, but thank you to Content Stack for letting us film here every single day at the Content Stack Experience Center in Austin, Texas. If you like today's show, whether you're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast, or X, throw us a like, a comment, and a review. Throw us a five-star rating if you think we earned it. And as always, we'll see you Monday morning here at Venture Daily.